time to start saving those crystals, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're finally getting a Gintama collab for the CN side of Langrisser. Which means they will probably come to Global in around 6 months time, probably. Hopefully. Now this was leaked a long time ago but was unfortunately delayed for who knows what reason. Maybe because of licensing issues like what happened to the global side of for the Yu Yu Hakusho collab when it first came out. I will just be going over the skills first before I give you my final thoughts on them. So before we go in real quick, I just want to say a quick shout out to Wikigrisser for providing a much clearer info on them. So once again, big thanks to Wikigrisser. Now I never watched the anime before so sorry if I butchered the name. So we got our first SSR hero. Jintoki Sakata. He has both infantry paths for his classes and is pretty strong. So his talent, Samurai Spirit, if an ally is attacked, gains one stack of Samurai Soul, which increases his attack and damage taken is reduced that lasts four turns. His attack does increase and his damage reduction is decreased depending on his star level will be at three stars for 3%, 4% at four stars, 6% at five stars, and 8% at six stars. And they can stack up to four times. So this is kind of like how Ultimolar works, with the exception that Ultimolar increases both his attack and defense. And when he has 4 stacks, he transforms into his Shiro Yasha effect that gives him plus 2 mobility, increases his damage dealt by 30% and can attack first. But when an ally dies, he gains 4 stacks of Samurai Spirit and can act again when he already uses his turn. And of course this Shiro Yasha cannot be dispelled or immunized and his act again will have to wait for 1 turn before it can happen again. So let's talk about his new skills here. Sheep Ram. Attacks in a straight line dealing 0.4 times AoE physical damage that disables weapon effects for 2 turns. But if it is a regular enemy or an NPC, then instead their attacking int is reduced by 25%. And it can also reduce the enemy damage by 20% up to 60% depending on how far they really are. And it will knock them back by 3 blocks. The skill can reach 6 blocks long and has a cooldown of 3 turns. His second new skill, Oath of Protection, is an assist skill that can be selected on an ally and if they are within 3 blocks of Jin Toki, he will guard against physical attacks for them and he can revive for 50% of HP if he is killed when guarding. But if that ally dies with the Guardian Oath effect on them, then he'll gain a permanent Shiro Yasha effect. And of course, Guardian Oath cannot be dispelled or immunized and the skill actually has a 15 turn cooldown. But I don't think you really need to use it a second time to be honest. And then his last new skill is right here. Eat Candy. It's a 1C skill by the way. And it's, and it's a pretty interesting one. It's an assist skill that restores 50% of HP and he gains a stack of sugar that lasts 6 turns. And it can be stacked as well. He can move an additional 3 blocks and attack after using the skill as well. But if he gains 2 stacks of sugar, he'll get Sugar Overdose which reduces his mobility by 1 and his damage though is decreased by 15%. Any buffs that's on him when he uses the skill do not lose their turn duration. And of course, Sugar and Sugar Overdose cannot be immune, immunized or be dispelled. But when in Shiro Yasha form, Sugar Overdose we're not taking an effect. So I would just say make sure to use it only once in a while. Unless there comes a situation where you really have to use it again. Also it has a 3 turn cooldown as well. And of course you can't forget the 3C skill, Lake Toya. It has a passive effect whereas if he has not dealt damage then he gains Ido or whatever how you want to pronounce it. Before entering battle, he deals 0.25 times AUE physical damage within one ring. And this buff does only last for one turn. Also this will do 1.8 times physical damage to an enemy that dispels 5 buffs from them and disables all their equipment effects that last for 2 turns that cannot be dispelled as well. But if an enemy is an NPC or regular enemy, then instead their stats is reduced by 25%. If the skill does not kill an enemy, then the cooldown is reduced by 5 turns, which is pretty insane. Also, you have to wait 2 turns before you can really trigger the cooldown effect again, which is just crazy. Now, I don't know what they were doing when they decided to make this guy. This guy is totally gonna be a menace. 
but I don't think he's gonna be game breaking, but obviously he's gonna be really strong. His attack increase and damage taken decrease already sounds pretty nice, which can be stackable by the way, once again. And he brings amazingly good offensive skills and can heal himself thanks to one of his skills. Then you have his 3C skill that gives something that's just really ridiculous. It can disable all of the enemy's equipment effects if you're using him for a PvP, but it will lower the enemy's stats by 25% on regular enemies. Now this is something new because we have never seen any other characters that has ever disabled all equipment effects and lowered all stats, so this is a first. This guy gets even more insane when he is in his Shiro Yasha effect, cause then he'll be able to do 30% more damage and have a total of plus 5 mobility, and if you're using Breeze on him, it'll be plus 7 mobility in total, as well as being able to strike first. Now if you bring his ult of protection, he'll be able to have this effect permanently, which will require you to sacrifice one of your teammates, since you can't really abuse this using summons. Now this guy is definitely meant for rush box if you enjoy PvP, so I can definitely see him being used more often there. And of course this guy is totally great for a PvE as well. And here's our second SSR character, Kagura. She has two different classes, a Lancer and a Cavalry. Her talent, which is called Yato Blood, it lets her increase her attacking defense when entering battle by 10% at 3 stars, 15% at 4 stars, 20% at 5 stars, and 30% at 6 stars. She will gain Hungry after she actively attacks, and it can stack up up to 7 times. But at 5 stacks, she gains So So Hungry, which reduces her mobility by 1 and she attacks last which already sounds concerning. The probability of getting hungry is 100% at 3 stars up to 50% at 6 stars, so she will require quite a bit of investment. Her hungry and so so hungry cannot be dispelled or be immunized. Now her unique skills, one of them being Umbrella Gun. It attacks an enemy dealing 1.5 times physical damage that causes the placement effect. That pushes the target 2 blocks back after battle only if you are attacking the enemy within 1 block because with this skill you'll be able to target the enemy within 2 blocks. But if she has less than 3 stacks of hungry, she'll be able to attack first. And of course, melee soldiers will attack with you if you attack within 2 blocks, and this skill is not affected by melee penalties. But this skill does have a 3 turn cooldown. Then we have her 1c skill, Wolf Dawn. It's an assist skill that dispels 2 buffs from yourself and removes up to 5 stacks of hungry, as well as being able to heal 80% of Kagura's HP. And she will not gain a stack of hungry when she uses this skill. And this skill has a 3 turn cooldown as well. Then we have her final unique skill here, Punch Kick Flurry, which does 1.8 times physical damage that disables the enemy armor effect, but when using it against an NPC or a regular enemy, then it lowers their defense by 25% that lasts for 2 turns. If she has less than 3 stacks of hungry, then the enemy will be stunned for 1 turn. Now I'm not sure if this stun effect will be able to apply after battle or before battle. And this effect lasts for 1 turn, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be before battle. Because if we keep reading here, after battle the target is inflicted with healing received reduced by 50% that lasts 2 turns and cannot be dispelled. Then finally we have our 3C skill. Awaken Nature. It has a passive skill. If she does not have so so hungry, her normal attack is increased by 20% and can heal 30% of HP before battle. It looks like it's an active skill that increases your own attack by 20%, then gain immunity to all debuffs, and gain combative nature, which increases her damage dealt by 30% and reduces her physical damage taken by 30%. She can move an additional 4 blocks and be able to attack right after using this skill. The cooldown of this 3C is reduced by 5 turns and this cooldown effect lasts for 2 turns but the 3C skill alone has a total cooldown of 6 turns. And of course, combat of nature cannot be dispelled and you won't gain hungry when using this skill, but will gain 3 stacks of hungry when the effect of this skill actually ends. I feel like she's going to be kinda annoying to manage, especially if you're trying to really use her at 3 stars, since that hunger is pretty much going to stop her from drawing out the good parts of using her skills since she will need less than 3 stacks of it in order to really get it to activate. Now I'm not saying that you want less than 3 stacks all the time since she's already going to be dealing some big deeps. But those would really help quite a bit, especially her umbrella strike that lets her attack first. I don't think it's gonna cause too much problems, but I say eventually when she does come out, just be sure to keep an eye on how many stacks she has, because I know some people will eventually forget that that even exists. 
And finally, our last character, which is a SR character you'll be able to get for free from the event, most likely. Shinpachi Shimura. For both of his class, you can choose between an infantry or a holy class, but his talent, designated complainer. After taking action, applies one debuff to one enemy at two stars, but at three and four stars, it'll be two debuffs instead. And then at five and six stars, it will be three debuffs. If you are within two blocks at two and three stars, three blocks at four and five stars and four blocks at six stars. Before entering battle, gives three random debuffs and if the enemy has five or more debuffs, then the enemy will receive an anger effect that increases their damage dealt by 10% and their damage taken by 20%. He has a 1C skill that's called Run Away. It's a passive skill when entering battle, damage taken is reduced by 20% and if the enemy is not killed, then it will displace yourself by three blocks away from the target, which is kind of an odd one to be honest. But that damage taken reduced by 20% is really nice. And then his 2C skill, Shinpachi's Nature, has a passive skill before battle. There's a 20% chance that both troops will not attack. And it does have a 1 turn cooldown before this effect can really be used again. But the skill alone has a 3 turn cooldown because he's able to restore 100% of HP when he uses it on himself. And he cannot be attacked from the enemy from their normal and regular skill unless they use a surrounding AUE skill. This does last for 1 turn and cannot be dispelled. Then lastly, his 3C skill. Uh, wait, how do I even pronounce this? For Su? For Su. I'm just, I'm just gonna go with that one. Again, has a passive skill that gives damage taken reduced by 15% and guards nearby allies within one block. He'll be able to teleport one block near any ally within five block range. And that ally will receive AUE damage taken reduced by 20% and immunity to debuffs for two turns. Then it increases his own guard range by two blocks for three turns. His kits are kind of pretty all over the place. So I'd say it's pretty much up to you on how you want to build him. Since he has both a decent good mix of both offensive because he does have war and sun slash as well. And for his defensive skills, he does have an iron fist to guard and you can also bring some of his other supportive skills as well so that's not totally a bad idea as well. If you want him to lean more over his defensive side, then I'd recommend using him in his holy class since it does give him more defensive stats. But if you want to use him as an attacker, then go with his infantry class since that one has a more higher attack and skill stat. And of course you don't really have to listen to what I recommend and you can mix it up however you feel like as well. It's totally up to you on how you want to use him, like I said. I feel like there's no right or wrong answer. Overall, I don't think these characters are bad at all. Well, maybe except for Kagura since her talent really holds her back so they really dummy down on her. But maybe I'm just underestimating her. Jin Toki, however, is definitely going to be a very hype character. So I'd say save your crystals and vouchers till this collab eventually comes to Global in like six months since I think Global is six months behind CN server. And the upcoming characters aren't gonna be too crazy from what I can remember. Well, except for one, but the character I'm thinking of is really meant for PvP. But I will be making videos on these upcoming characters whenever I can, so be sure to stick around for that if you're interested. But that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And feel free to let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this collab happening in CN right now. So yeah, thanks for watching. Dear fellow.